Ravenberg, who plays holding midfield for Liverpool, is the linchpin of Liverpool's new tactics under Arna Slot, and without him, they might just easily fall apart. When Liverpool signed Gravenberg, they didn't intend for him to be their new number six. He didn't show the ability he is showing now and ultimately didn't live up to expectations for the Reds. So, how did Gravenberg go from flop to being Liverpool's key man? And there may be even more to come from him. Liverpool fans will certainly hope there is more to come from Gravenberg, even though he has begun to thrive in a position where they least expected him to. When Liverpool signed Gravenberg, he was supposed to make up for their inability to sign Jude Bellingham twice. Liverpool first tried to sign Bellingham when he was in Birmingham, but were unable to as Jude's family chose for him to remain at Birmingham. When Bellingham did move, he went to Dortmund instead. Liverpool were not willing to give up. They tried to sign Bellingham in 2023, but couldn't meet his €103 million Euro valuation. Liverpool wanted to revamp their squad, and splashing that kind of money on a player meant they wouldn't be able to overhaul their squad. So, Bellingham went to Real Madrid, and Liverpool began to look for another player who could play like him. Liverpool wanted a complete midfielder. They wanted a midfielder with that X factor. Like Jude, the midfielder had to be an athlete who is technically secure on the ball and could be both impactful at the attacking and defensive phases of the game. This midfielder had to be versatile, be able to dribble and progress the ball into dangerous areas of the pitch. Their search led them to the out-of-favour and surplus to requirements Bayern midfielder Ryan Gravenberg, and they signed him for €40 million. Wait, how could an out-of-favour midfielder cost that much? Well, let's do a quick rewind. Gravenberg began his career at Ajax, where he displayed potential as the next Zinedine Zidane, a player who Jude himself has been compared with. At 16 and 130 days old, he debuted for Ajax and became their youngest ever player, beating the record previously held by Clarence Seydorf. Ajax was key to Gravenberg's development and Eric Ten Hag, the recently fired Man United manager who was Ajax's coach at the time, challenged Gravenberg to be a complete midfielder. Subscribe to the channel for our upcoming videos on United's new manager. Ten Hag used Gravenberg in the holding midfield position where he played 17% of his games and was great at avoiding pressure using sleek turns which at the time he didn't know would help him stand out at Liverpool. Ten Hag also played Gravenberg in both the central midfield and the attacking midfield roles. Gravenberg was up to the task. He contributed to the team with both passes, dribbling and goals. He was phenomenal and Bayern were watching. So they signed him in the 22-23 summer transfer window for around 18.5 million euros. Unfortunately for Gravenberg, Bayern already had the established pairing of Joshua Kimmich and Leon Goretzka in the holding and central midfield roles. Also, for the attacking midfield role, they had Jamal Musiala. Even Tuchel admitted that he only saw Gravenberg as an eight and that there was no room for Gravenberg in the squad. So he only played 24 times in the league for Bayern and started just three times. So like that, Gravenberg went from a bright star to a player Bayern wanted to get rid of. Now, the irony of the situation was that Tuchel was looking for a new holding midfielder for Bayern. They spent that summer chasing the hard-tackling Jao Paulinha when their solution was right under their noses. Tuchel, who built his career as a manager due to his experimentation ability, didn't even consider Gravenberg as a six. He had the physical profile at six foot two. He would have been dominant both on the ground and in the air for Bayern. Well, It wasn't only Tuchel who was unwilling to experiment with Gravenberg. Even Jurgen Klopp was unwilling too. After a year at Bayern, Liverpool signed Gravenberg for €40 million in the summer of the 23-24 season. By the end of the season, it looked like Liverpool had gotten a bad investment. Under Jurgen Klopp, 
Gravenberg made 12 league starts and 14 substitute appearances in that first season. He was seen as loose in possession, which, by the way, wasn't unusual for a central midfielder. He wasn't even seen as a holding midfielder. The holding midfield was considered to be Endo or McAllister's job. Now, it's interesting that Klopp trusted Alexis for the role and didn't try Gravenberg there. And Klopp could have had his reasons. And while Gravenberg did have to step up, the conditions to succeed just weren't there for him in that first season. Liverpool were trying out a new inverted fullback system and it led to unbalance. It was meant to draw out the attacking capabilities of Gravenberg and Dominic Soboslai. However, it left acres of space behind, which was just too much for Endo to cope with. No wonder the two midfielders didn't have such an impactful first season. It didn't even look like Gravenberg would be great in his second season, as Liverpool were trying to recruit more midfielders. They spent the whole summer transfer window chasing Martin Zubimendi. Slot, who we have made videos on before, has been regarded as the combination of Klopp and Guardiola. He is both chaos and order rolled into one. He wanted Liverpool to both cause chaos and have control in their games. And according to him, the best candidate to bring order was Zubimendi. Although Zubimendi isn't particularly athletic or pacey enough to clamp down on attackers, Slot didn't think he needed to be. Slot isn't so insistent on a ball-winning defensive midfielder. And maybe this is why he wasn't a big fan of Stefan Bajetic, whose style looks a tad more combative. So Liverpool had to loan Bajetic out. What Slot wanted most from Zubimendi was his ability to receive the ball in tight areas, retain it and pass it to a more attacking player. Zubimendi made up for his lack of pace by reading a match so well that he arrives at the place where the attackers would be to win the ball from them. In the 23-24 season, Zubimendi was among the 86th percentile of players for interceptions, winning 61% of his aerial duels, 52% of his ground duels, and making 5.8 recoveries per 90 minutes. However, Zubimendi, who seemed open to a move, stayed put, and so Slot had to look inward for a solution. To him, Zubimendi was the only one worth buying. No one else came close except Gravenberg. Now, Slot, who was also a manager in the Dutch league, knew firsthand just how versatile Gravenberg could be. So, during the pre-season, Slot told Gravenberg that while he wanted him to focus on being a box-to-box -box midfielder, he would try him as a holding midfielder. Now, as a holding midfielder, there was the requirement of the defensive aspect of the game, which Gravenberg would have to learn. Still, Slot was determined to use Ryan there. Why? Well, out of Liverpool's midfielders, Gravenberg was the one who was most comfortable in possession. During pre-season, Slot began to try Gravenberg out as a holding midfielder. He wasn't completely spectacular at first, which was normal considering his confidence wasn't exactly high and he was just trying out a position that he hadn't played in years. But there were some positive signs and Slot continued to use Gravenberg in that role. With each game he played, Gravenberg's confidence began to rise and it got to a point that it seemed like he was showing off. Just look at his way of evading pressure, for instance, the way he drops his shoulder and turns away from an opponent when he receives the ball in a tight area. It's just absolutely magnificent. Gravenberg has done the move so much that it has actually been regarded as his signature move, with fans calling it the Gravenberg turn. That move has made the difference several times for Liverpool so far in the 24-25 season. Slot's system is possession-based. They play from the back to draw out the opponent's press. With his skill, Gravenberg can glide past opponents, allowing Liverpool to have more players in the central areas of the pitch. With that move, Gravenberg turns defence to attack consistently for Liverpool, and that is absolutely scary. The move for sure is risky, but so far Gravenberg hasn't put a foot wrong. 
He's made Liverpool an unpredictable team with his style, with Slot even praising him for adapting to the situation. And this has just been excellent for the team and the player as an individual. Ravenberg isn't just about transforming defence to attack or just being only good on the ball. Gravenberg is learning the defensive side of his role and is putting up some decent numbers. In the Premier League, he makes around two interceptions each game, rarely gets dribbled past, makes around two tackles each game and has 5.6 ball recoveries per game. Gravenberg also has won 60% of his ground duels and has been completely dominant in the air, winning 85% of his aerial duels. Liverpool are 11 wins from 12 this season, the best ever start for the club, and Slot is the only manager to have done this for the Reds. So, who are the players that are key? Well, Slot is spoiled for choice, and he's shown that he can also adapt to any situation. He's already experimenting with different players as the striker. He has tried winger Diogo Jota, also in that false nine position, who still looks like first choice. Elliot could also play as the attacking midfielder that would press with the striker. Or Cody Gakpo could couple up and play that role. Gakpo could be immense for Slot's pressing systems. The forward, who has gotten a new lease of life with his display in the Euro 2024, where he was among the players to win the Golden Boot, would benefit a lot from Slot's system. He will be able to play closer to the goal, where he will be more dangerous. Also, if Gakpo plays behind a striker like Nunes in Slot's 4-2-3-1 formation, he can benefit from Nunes's dynamism. Nunes is a mobile striker and can drift wide due to his pace. This could allow Gakpo to enter into the box and have a few shooting attempts at the goalkeeper. Another midfielder that has been cooking recently is Curtis Jones. He was excellent against Chelsea and has been giving great performances all season. So Liverpool's team is stacked for sure. However, The men who have been scoring most of the team's goals are Luis Diaz and, of course, Mo Salah, who is still proving to be one of the best wingers in the world. After just match day five in the 24-25 season, Luis Diaz had successfully laid most of the outside doubts to rest. He has shown that he has grown and that the future is now. Check out our video on him here. Salah is, of course, doing it again this season, scoring and assisting for fun. And he could be in a golden boot race with Palmer and Haaland this season. Stay tuned. Ravenberg is far from being the finished product yet, but he looks close. And with each match, he is getting closer. There have been situations where Gravenberg has been outshone in the midfield. Against Chelsea in the 24-25 season, he had quite the battle with Caicedo and against Declan Rice for Arsenal. It is a new position for him, but the signs are good. Will Gravenberg continue as he has started? Are we looking at a player similar to Bellingham in the Premier League? Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to this channel for more.